Okay, so for today, we're going to discuss in Math 6200 or Engineering Data Analysis, the topic Statistical Computations. So here in Statistical Computation, we're going to tackle different uh, kinds of uh, vir uh, visualization of our statistical data. So we have here normal distribution. We're in, we're going to tackle group frequency distribution, histogram, and relative frequency distribution. So first, let's discuss group frequency distribution. So when we say group frequency distribution, it is stated here that the uh, data or the large data sets are being displayed. So ibig sabihin po, meron tayong a large data set where in the description, is that it shows how often a set of specific responses such as this data set is organized in, into equal sizes subsets. And then uh, upon concurring possible responses for that, um, we measure how many times or how many uh, or how often that possible responses occur in that sample. So bago natin maintindihan kasi group frequency distribution, we need to understand first what is frequency. So pag sinabi kasi natin frequency or the word itself, no, how frequent. Okay, so how frequent, gaano kadalas. So when we say frequency, it is how often something or any variable occurs or kung gaano kadalas nag-o-occur or gaano kadalas nangyayari ang isang bagay. So yun yung tinatawag nating frequency. Now when we say frequency distribution, this is the arrangement of that values na ating minimeasure kung gaano siya ka-often and their frequency and how often those values occur. Ibig sabihin, uh, pag sinabi na nating frequency distribution, we are trying to arrange those variables. Kung gaano ka-often siya nag, uh, nangyayari, paano po natin siya ma-observe or paano po natin siya ma-visualize. Ibig sabihin, when we say frequency distribution, uh, we can conclude that it is the arrangement of values and their frequency and how often each value occurs. Now, in order for us to understand this um, uh, frequency distribution, let me give you an example, okay? So, let me just open a whiteboard. Okay, so ang example natin here is the following are the number of transistors sold by a lo local electronic shop over the last 10 days. Ibig sabihin daw, sa 10 araw, ito daw yung number of transistors na naibenta. So, you have here 22 transistors for day 1, 20 for day 2, for day 3, 18, day 4, 23, day 5, 20, day 6, 25, day 7, 22, day 8, 20, day 9, 18, and day, 20, uh, day 10, 20. Now, we are measuring here how frequent uh, those numbers occur. Ibig sabihin sa 10 araw na yon, gaano po kadalas yung uh, pagbenta natin nung specific number na yon. So, we can conclude for that that we can arrange the values uh, from least to most. Okay, so let's uh, try. So let me draw here a table. Okay, so pwede natin sabihin here. So pwede natin ilagay na dito. Sa isa nating column, we have here your transistors. Then dito sa kabila is yung frequency or gaano ka dalas yung occurrence ng event na yun. So upon arranging, pwede natin ilagay na 18.
Okay? So, upon um, upon writing, no, meron tayong 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So, bibilangin natin kung ilan yung mga values nung transistor. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ilan yung 18 natin, we have 2. So, lalagay natin yung frequency niya is 2. Then, yung 19 natin, ilan? So, mapansin nyo, wala. So, lalagay natin, 0. Then, yung 20 natin, meron tayo, 4. twenty one natin, meron tayong, wala. Then, yung 22 natin, we have 2. So, 23 natin, meron tayong isa. Then, 0 for 24. And 25, meron tayong isa. So, kung uh, i-analyze natin, meron tayong frequency ng ganan. No? So, meron tayong different kinds of um, frequency per number of transistors. So, pwede nating sabihin na kung tayo ay magkakaroon ng frequency distribution is that the transistor sold. So, sulat natin. From 15 to 19, then meron tayong 20. So 24. Meron din tayong 25 to 29. So ilan yung equivalent nila? So, yung 15 to 19 natin, ilan po yung sakop niya? 15 to 19 hanggang dito. Yung 20 to 24, 20 to 24, and 25 to 29. So, isusulat lang natin sila. So, 2 plus 0, that's 2. Then, 20 to 24, you have 4, you have 0, 2, and 1. So, add natin yon So, we have 7. And 25 to 29, you have one. Therefore, pwede natin sabihin that uh, this is the frequency distribution of our problem. Okay? So, yun po yung ating uh, analyzation when it comes to frequency distribution. So, next is yung ating relative frequency distribution. So, when we say relative frequency distribution, it is stated here that it lists the percent of data in each class. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, uh, it can visualize the number of times the event occurs divided by the number of trials. So, this time naman, sa relative frequency distribution, is uh, uh, ang minimeasure naman natin dito is kung gaano kadalas nangyayari ang isang event then, saka natin siya i-compare doon sa number of trials. Next is yung histogram. So, yung histogram naman natin is yung graph natin that we use to visualize different intervals in a frequency distribution. So, commonly, ang histogram natin is one of the statistical processes control that is used in the industry in order for uh, people to understand the um, distribution of their uh, products, distribution of their sales, and etc. So more commonly, this is used in presentations, etc. Okay, so, uh, so let me show you an example. Okay, so here you have a, we have a problem here. So paano tayo kukuha ng uh, group frequency distribution? So, a prob uh, meron tayong problem. Alex measured the lengths of leaves on an oak tree. Then, uh, to the nearest centimeter. So, ito yung ating data. Meron tayong uh, uh, varying data, 9, 16, 13, and so on and so forth. Now, ang una natin gagawin is to arrange them from least to most. So, that is step one. Step one natin. Okay, so, uh, step one natin here is to... Yan. Step 1 natin is to order the lengths. Kailangan natin siyang i-arrange from least to most. 
So, kailangan ma-arrange natin siya from least to most. So, mapapansin nyo, nag-start tayo sa 1, then nag-end tayo sa 18. Then, ang makoconclude natin dyan is meron tayong smallest value or the minimum value. So, minimum value natin is 1 cm. Largest value natin or the maximum is 18 cm. Then, ang range po natin is we will divide the upper or the largest value minus the smallest value. So, that is your range. So, ibig sabihin, 18 minus 1 is equal to 17 cm. So, that is your range. Next. So, yung range natin, uh, range natin here, so nakuha natin yung 17. Okay? So, yung 17 natin is we will try to use that. Okay? So, uh, 17 divided by 5 is equal to 3.5. So, yung 3.4 natin, okay, so i-round up natin siya since meron siyang excess na 0.4. So, yun ay i-round up natin siya ng 4. So, ibig sabihin po, yung pagbibilang natin ng, mga, uh, ng ating ranges is uh, 4. So, by 4, ibig sabihin 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on and so forth. Yun po yung magiging range ng inyong length. Now, to find the upper and lower is kailangan nyo lang hanapin yung number na medyo slightly na mas mataas and slightly mas mababa doon sa ating length. So, yung zero natin is di naman tayo pwedeng gumamit ang negative. No? So, yun ay magiging zero to 3.5. So, that is just slightly higher. So, that is uh, additional 0.5. Then, uh, slightly lower than 4 is 3.5. So, dito tayo nag-end. No, so, in, uh, ang ending natin dito is 3.5. Yun yung magiging slightly lower natin here, which is 3.5. Then, a slightly higher natin here is 7.5. Then, uh, 7.5 to 11.5. Then, 11.5 to 15.5. Then, 15.5 to 19.5. So, yun yung ating magiging upper and lower. Now, anything na magpo-fall sa 0 0.35, uh, 0 to 3.5 is yun yung bibilangin natin na frequency. So, kung ano po ang mag-fall under here, okay? So, bibilangin natin yun or isasali natin siya dito. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, try natin 0 to 3 cm or 0 to 3.5. Ilan yun? So, we have 3. So, yun yung frequency natin. So, ganun din ang gagawin natin. Bibilangin nyo lang po dito. Then, uh, pagkabilang natin is bibilangin nyo po lahat ng naging occurrences natin. So, yung 38 na yon is just also this one. Bibilangin nyo lang po silang lahat. So, that is 38. So, that's how you do um, group frequency distribution. So, sa histogram naman, uh, histogram natin is meron tayong example dito. So, example natin is meron daw tayong scores na 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. Now, bibilangin natin kung ilang beses nag-occur yung ating data. So, that is with respect to your frequency or kung gaano kadami, then yung score natin or yung category na measure natin. So, ito yung 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, ilang beses nag-occur si 1? Dalawa. So, dito natin ipapantay yung column. Ilang nag-occur si 2? So, 5. So, dito natin siya ilalagay. 3, 4, 4, 2, and 5, 1. So, kahit hindi natin tigdan to, okay, so yung scores na ito, so we can visualize uh, to ourselves the graph itself. Ibig sabihin, mas nabibigyan natin ng conclusion or mas nabibigyan natin ng explanation yung ating problem. So, katulad nito, okay? So, here we have an, uh, a total application uh, for a tally of presidential votes. Let's say you have five candidates, okay, na, uh, for example, tumatakbo sa Supreme Student Council. So, meron kang five candidates. So, ilan yung votes tallied per candidate para makita or ma-visualize natin yung data. So, you have here candidate A, mapapansin nyo, ilan po yung data niya, 150. Then, si candidate B is above 150. So, let's say that is just uh, 190 or 199. Then, candidate C is uh, below 100 but above 50. Then, candidate D is above 50. And, candidate E is somewhere 
uh, na mas mataas ng kaunti sa 100. So, that's just 101. No? So, meron tayong mga histogram na nilalagay nila sa taas yung value nung kanilang uh, graph no? para hindi po siya ma-misinterpret. Pero as you can see, visually speaking, alam nyo kung sino yung nanalo, which is si candidate B. Okay? So, meron tayong close fight between candidate B and candidate A. So, as you can see there, there uh, we have different kinds of application of distribution or frequency distribution. Okay, so mahalaga sa atin is maintindihan natin uh, that the um, statistics or these numbers can be further improved and further, uh, further be visualized para mas maintindihan po natin. At uh, itong mga to, is, it doesn't stop here no? in, uh, in the classroom. This will be widely used once you enter the world of engineering, especially if you are in engineering. Uh, ito po kalimitan ang pinapagamit uh, sa mga engineers to visualize and to, um, and to find out what are the problems or what are the, um, what are the root causes na pwedeng i, uh, pwede natin bigyan ng solusyon. Okay? So, therefore, uh, you need to understand statistics more. Uh, para po magkaroon tayo ng grasp sa kanya. Okay? So, that is the end of our discussion for today in, uh, in statistical computation. So, there are various ways that you can further or uh, implore uh, the world of statistical computation. Actually, there is one subject that is statistical process control and, or statistical um, quality control wherein you will use this, uh, these terminologies, these visualizations to understand manufacturing process and other processes in the uh, industry. Okay, so itong mga to ang ginagamit natin para maintindihan natin siya, magkaroon kayo ng interpretation and can be used to solve problems. So in, uh, in industrial engineering, um, they have a subject for that, which is statistical process control or quality control, quality assurance. Okay? So, lahat ng ito ay na-apply doon because you can use quality assurance or quality control uh, to, uh, to see and interpret whether or how things are happening in the process and how can you further resolve that. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng iba't ibang SQC tools or SQC tools such as yung check sheet, uh, pwede tayong gumamit ng control chart and analysis of variance. So, napakadami natin pwedeng gamitin para po maintindihan. So, uh, it seems that it may be hard, pwedeng mahirapan kayo, pero uh, if it's applied in the real life, so you would see there that it is not that complicated and it actually helps people and engineers um, and uh, statistician to further analyze data. So, as I said in the previous examples or previous weeks, mapapansin nyo na mas naiintindihan nyo through news, di ba? Naiintindihan nyo sa balita yung COVID situation, di ba? Na, nakikita nyo kung uh, totoo ba na uh, nag-flatten na yung curve or kaya yung uh, ito na ba yung second wave or uh, so much more, di ba? Nagkakaroon ng uh, nagkakaroon ng visualization di ba, sa news ng uh, graph or trends. So, kung mapapansin nyo, that is an application of statistical computation. Okay? So, that is the end of our discussion for today.